What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Fans Toys Goose, their version of Skydive. So this guy just came out recently and actually my buddy Pake for Life has already taken a look at it. We're going to take a look at it as well. I'll also be doing a second uh, review, more of a comparison between this guy and the Zeta Toys version so we can kind of go in depth on that so i didn't want to make the route too long so we're going to do them separately but here's the box we again have very nice artwork by johannes i guess he's permanently employed by these folks because he keeps done the artwork um on the bottom you've got the jet mode here just says goose on the top of the jet mode here's the back and you've got the product images here he is with maverick we'll take a look at that a little bit later and some other product images and it looks good so that's really it for the box. Let's get this guy here and take a look at the figure. Here we have the figure in his robot mode. He does come packaged a little bit more compact in the package. So you have to kind of complete the transformation. He does have his feet folded up. The wings are kind of folded in a little bit. And you've got just a couple things that are not quite the way it should be. So just take a look at the instructions when you open it or watch my video and, and get it fully transformed. But it does look great once it's transformed. So let's take a quick 360 of this guy. You've got a lot of paint on this thing. I actually, I don't think I can find a single thing that's not painted. Probably this is not painted. The, the canopy. <laughs> But pretty much everything else, literally everything else, maybe not the hands, everything is painted on this. It's just head to toe. And, you know, that's typical fans' toys is they paint everything. Um, but, yeah, this doesn't this doesn't disappoint the amount of paint on here. Uh, you've got some very metallic black and metallic red for this. And it just, it just stands out. It looks really good that way. And you've got some gold paint for the face with the blue eyes not metallic this time they're about the same color as the maverick figure so we'll we'll take a look at that a little bit later but they both have matching eye color so that's good you do have uh painted silver kind of all throughout for the jet mode and we'll take a look at that but that same color comes through in the robot mode he does have a little bit of a backpack but i will be honest with you one this is cartoon accurate to me and in fact, now that we're talking about that, let's bring up the G1 cartoon. But for me, this looks cartoon accurate. I don't care that it's got this backpack because where else is it going to go? I mean, even in the cartoon, he had a backpack back here. M maybe it wasn't this big, but honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. He's not like a, a car bot where it just folded up flat, right? And, and, and those didn't have backpacks, but this one very clearly in the cartoon did. So there's the G1 cartoon. I think it looks good compared to the cartoon. Now, let's take a look at some of his accessories. So first up, we'll have take a look at these guns. They, again, are painted. They look really good. There's just two matching guns, no difference here. So let's get those into the hands. There he is with his guns mounted. They fit in just like a normal Masterpiece weapon with the tabs, and they look really good. I, I like that they painted that. That's just a detail. And you can pull off that pose that you see on the back of the box or in the promo shots. Uh, you also get, uh, let's take a look at this face sculpt before we change it out. So here's his face. And it's a really good looking face sculpt. Nice color detail and nice blue eyes that match with the what we got with the Maverick. So that's good. And we'll take a look at the alternate face, which is right here. And kind of the sh yelling, shouting face. Ah! Let's put that on. There he is with the shouting face. That looks really good, especially in this pose where he's firing in both directions. Like he's taking down some Decepticons. That looks really good. So both accessories it comes with are very nice. All right, so now let's take a look at some articulation. So the head is on a rotating swivel. It does go all the way around. It's a little bit hindered. It does bump into things. So you kind of want to be careful, uh, but you can get it rotated all the way around. Actually for transformation, if you lift it up, you can rotate it all the way around and put it back down. So, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to move it all the way around, but you can if you need to. The arm is on a ratchet. Now, we'll talk about this in the final thoughts, but there is a problem with this ratchet. It's actually on a screw. And I, I think I'll show you that during transformation. Um, it does work. The ratchet works. 
but it tightens and loosens at different points, which is really strange. So right here, it's very loose. Then it gets tighter, 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 and then here it's really tight. And that's because there's a screw that's changing its tightness in there, which is really not, I don't like that at all. And other reviewers are probably going to talk about the inconsistency of that ratchet, and the inconsistency is definitely due to the screw on the inside. And you can tighten that screw, but that causes the places where it's tight to be too tight. So that's, that's an option, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, you do have a nice joint that goes all the way up to there and rotates all the way around. You can rotate at the bicep. No uh, butterfly joint or anything like that, but you don't really need it on this figure. And you get a 90 degree bend at the elbow. Now, at first when I opened this figure, I didn't even get the 90 degree bend. And I thought, why would they make this so limited? And that's because I didn't have this joint pulled all the way down. So in the box, out of the box, it might not be pulled all the way down. So make sure you pull this down all the way, extend it. It might be pushed up just a little hair. You want to pull it that last little bit. And then you should get the full 90. It is single jointed. You don't get a double jointed elbow. You can see there is grease on this figure, right? Especially in here. You can see it's wet, right? That's that's the lube for that joint. And it's starting to come out actually. And I don't know if that's, if I should probably should clean that up, honestly, because that's not a good thing. It's probably not good for the paint. Anyway, so moving on, the, it is a 90 degree bend at a single joint. You do have a rotation at the wrist, and then the fingers are typical fans toys, articulated dead two joints on each finger, and then the thumb is on a ball peg. And that's good enough for me. I don't need anything more than that. I like the nice sturdy fingers. I hate the spindly fingers you get with stuff like uh, X trans butts. So these work for me. Okay, uh, you do have hip skirts here and here, and the leg is on a ratchet, very strong ratchet. It it, it feels like it should go past there, and I don't feel like pushing it. Oh, it does. It just that last one doesn't feel too good. Goes all the way back to there before it hits, and you don't want to scratch the paint, so I'm not going to push it too hard. And out to here on a friction joint. Again, it hinders itself as it gets to the top there. So you want to be careful. There's a lot. Of, everything's painted. You do have a single jointed knee, and you get a 90 degree bend at that knee, which is good. Rotation at the thigh, upper thigh. We'll just close these. You do have an ankle tilt all the way, plenty. Uh, there is a tiny bit of ankle pivot. Yeah, you don't you don't get too much because it's hindered by what's around it, but you do get it, so I'm going to give him that one. And he does pose very nicely. You can just get him into all sorts of cool poses. And he, he's fun. He's a lot of fun to play with. Now, again, you want to be careful with the paint, but you can get him into really wide stances. You can get him into that pose they have on the box. I do wish they had a double jointed elbows, but I can see why they didn't do that. That's okay. Now let's take a look at this backpack. So there isn't a lot uh, you can do here. You can try to change it up. Now you want to sort of disconnect this from the side like that. Okay. And now you can do some alternate transformations. You can do it the other way around. So you can flip the wing this way and tuck it in, and you can have it like that. So it's really up to you. I, I think the other way is the official transformation or is the more cartoon accurate, but you can have it like this, and that gives gives it a little, moves the backpack a little bit more backwards. So here's, here's the correct official transformation, I believe, and here's the alternate. So you can kind of have it either way. Uh, I think I prefer this one just because it tightens up the backpack a little bit, but you can have it either way and I just wanted to, you know, tell you that you had that option. 
So now let's take a look at a couple of robot mode comparisons with some other figures. So here is with the Transform Elements version of Optimus Prime. They look really good together. I like this scale. Not as big as Optimus, but very close. It seems right to me. And here he is with the Fans Toys Maverick, their version of Silverbolt. And these two look really good together. Uh, it's per Again, perfect size, scale for me, anyways. Uh, I love that they've got these matching red translucent panels. That just looks so cool. I, I, I don't know, as a team, they're, they're going to look really good. I have to put an Autobot symbol on here. And here he is with the Make Toys Starscream. And they also look pretty good together. He's a little bit bigger than Starscream, which is interesting. I, I actually think they're supposed to be somewhat similar size in jet mode. I don't know about robot mode. So now let's get this guy transformed into vehicle mode. And again, I'm Probably not the best review to watch in terms of trying to learn transformation, but I'm going to do my best. And this is actually a fairly easy transformation. So let's let's start start with the arms. You open up these just like any classic transformation. You fold up the hand, close up the panel. You're going to clap this arm down on itself. Open up this panel here and fold the arm outwards. And then you're going to in this into the arm and it, it does end up pushing out this little metal piece here so you want to be careful because that could scratch the the paint okay push that in if you have it right if you've got it all the way in you should meet up there and you want to fold this down and then that tab should meet up with this slot here. Okay. See on the other side. Pull it in. Push it in. Collapse the arm. Open up this panel. Accordion it inwards. Straighten that out and then close this panel. Okay. Now you can open, pull these arms up. And that'll give you some room to work and you're really trying to get at these here open those up uh, this is another one of those things that's not done or it's not uh, put on when you pull it out of the box you're gonna have to do that yourself so pull the head up and that releases this entire panel so just fold that up for now and then you're gonna pull this entire chest piece away and just leave these out for now put the arms back down now this part is tricky and here's where I can show you how these arms are working. So there's a screw, let's see if I can get in close on that and get some light on it. So there's the screw and that screw is attached to the arm. So as you rotate, the screw is rotating. It's very hard to show this because it's losing focus but that screw is rotating as you rotate the arm and it's not a good thing. I don't know why they designed it that way. So it tightens and loosens as you move the arm. Now you can tighten that screw but that's going to make that ratchet joint, you can see the ratchet right there, that's going to make that ratchet joint really just way too tight and that's not what you want. So that's up to you how you want to deal with that but I just want to let you be aware that there is an issue there. So pull these arms forward and then rotate it and then push it outwards as much as you can and then they're gonna fold into here and they do kind of collide so you want to make sure you have them all the way out as far as possible so there's enough clearance. They, they kind of scratch each other and I don't like that but there's really no way to get in. You can kind of push them in at the same time uh, and then you can close up this panel and it should be made up again with the slots here and then close this up. So we kind of got that all squared away. Uh, turn the head around and, and push that down and you're kind of done with that. So next we'll work on the legs. So open up these panels and that's really just to avoid scratching and hurting paint. Open up this uh, oh, sorry, you can also fold in the heel spur and then hold in, fold in the toe. Then 
take the leg and accordion it down so it fits inside of this cavity that you just created. And it does peg in very nicely in there. And then you can close this up. And same on the other side. Fold in the heel, fold in the toe, open up this panel, fold this down, accordion this. I do feel a lot of lube in these joints and it's kind of getting on my hands, but it's okay. We'll wipe it off after. Then push the legs together and they are peg, two pegs there that should peg together. So I'll feel those go together. We're gonna have to fold them outward. So pull them up. And just sit them there for now because we have to do a little bit more with this later. So I just let them kind of rest like that. So you've got this whole armature flattened out. Yeah, I'm noticing this is popping. Okay, there we go. Okay, next thing we can do is take care of these wings. So you want to pop these wings out on these little arms. That's going to give you some room to work. While you're at it, you might as well just finish off and fold the wings together. Same on this side. Fold the wings out. And them. Uh, this paint is very delicate. It does tend to flake off a little bit. You can see I've lost a tiny bit of paint there, but it's not too bad. You just got to be careful. Okay. So now that you have that open up, you can open this up and we can unpeg the backpack from here. And it's pretty tight, so you just got to be gentle and careful. Okay, and now that whole backpack is loose. Okay, you see how that accordion's all back. Here's the thing that releases it. Okay, so let's work on this piece here. So, actually, let's leave that there and let's work on the front. So, unpeg these from here. Yeah, that's what those holes are for. So, if you're wondering why does it have peg holes on the side of the cockpit that's because that's how it transforms. Uh, there is a little spot here to stick your fingernail. You can get that in there. You can open this up and you're going to want to get this down flat and it does fit in right here and there is a little joint here that can move up and down. So you want to push that in and then flatten it in and it all should peg into here. And then you can close this up and you can close this up and this one is a little bit trickier. Um, I found that it doesn't quite fit as well as that other piece. It should peg together but mine is not as tight. There you go. So that's about as tight as you can get it. Make sure you've got this all the way down and then close that panel. Okay. Now we're going to take care of this back piece here. So you want to fold these up so that they meet. And you're going to peg those together. Fold this backwards. Fold this piece backwards. And those are going to peg together back here. So all of that should be pegged together. Leave these wings unpegged for now. And now you're going to get this whole panel into place. Now make sure you have these kind of out of the way and flattened down because they might have moved as you were transforming. You can also put these back down all into place. It all folds nice and flat. It really does come together very nicely, this, this jet. All right, so now you're going to get this into here and You want to peg this in here and you should feel it all kind of settle in and then you can get the back part on and you'll feel it settle into these pegs right here 
So make sure you got that all kind of squared away and tucked in nice and tight. Then you can work on these wings. So these wings are going to fold up and they're going to peg in right here. You see the peg all? So push those in. And same up here. And if it's not fitting, then you, you might have not have the angle right. So make sure you have the angle right. And it's still not fitting, so if you don't force it, just check and make sure everything's all lined up. And last little detail here, you're going to make sure this pegs in right, right there. Let's go ahead and do that. And same on this side, go ahead and peg this in. And you can peg it in pretty securely. And there you have the jet mode and we are going to get the, there's a little bit of transforming involved with the landing gear. So let's do that. So open up this panel here. There is a little edge here for your fingernails. You can get that in there. Fold that down. I'll show you on this side. Get your fingernail right in that, that hole there. Open up the wheel, close this up. It does kind of hold it in place. The front one is much more complicated to get the thing out. So first, there's a, again a slot right there. There's a lot of little slots like that for your fingernails. I love that they thought that through. They didn't just, uh, you know, leave you to your own devices to try to figure out where things go. So I'm just checking. This one is not going all the way in. So I want to make sure I had it right. There we go. So open up this cockpit using this little edge right here. It's perfectly designed for your fingernail. Open this up all the way as far as it can go. Open up the seat all the way as far as it can go. And then you can see there's a wheel there. But it's not going to be able to come down unless you open up the bottom here. So again, another spot for your fingernail right here. So stick your fingernail, open this up, and you're seeing the head there. And then there's the wheel. You're going to push that wheel through that cavity you just created. Okay. So go ahead and push that through. It should pop out from the bottom. And down here, it fits into a hole perfectly. So you got to line that up. And then that's where it fits. Just like that. And then on the top, push the seat back down. Push the the display back down and then close this and there you got the landing gear. And here we have Goose in his vehicle mode and it looks beautiful. And let's right away take a look at the G1 cartoon and I think this nails it. I mean they nailed it with this thing. It just is so good to the G1 cartoon. And usually fans toys takes a lot of sacrifices trying to get to G1 and what ends up happening is the transformation sucks. In this particular instance I feel it actually is a really fun transformation. I don't I didn't mind it at all. Now let's take a look at this shit. So this is an F16A unlike the Seekers which are F15s. This has a single engine on the back. The engine is actually a tiny bit articulated. You get a little bit side to side and up and down. I mean, I don't really know what that's for. There's not really any other purpose for that. So I think it is supposed to articulate just a little bit. The wings don't move. They all are locked in here, which is good. I like that they lock in. The Make Toys ones are floppy all over the place. We'll talk about that in a minute. We'll do a comparison. But, I mean, all the way around, this thing looks just, just beautiful. The the colors on this tail wing really nice. They look exactly like the cartoon to me. This nice cockpit here. Now I forgot to mention this when we were transforming. The way he was stored he's got this tail wing sitting on top of this in the box and it does cause a little scratch there. You can barely notice it. It's not a big deal. I just want you to be aware that in packaging you can scratch that up. So you do have some features here so you can get the cockpit open. Again, you just stick your finger in that little slot there. You can open this up and you do have a nice cockpit there and you can put figures in there. So here is Daniel from the Masterpiece Ultra Magnus and he does fit in there. You can get his legs in 
and you can sit down and you can close the cockpit and that's really cool I love that they incorporated that feature such a good idea to have the masterpiece sized figures fit in there and it feels solid it doesn't feel like it's gonna break like some of the other jets we've had now these things are delicate so if this did take a shelf dive they would break I mean they don't feel like they're breaking in my hand but it would not survive a shelf dive now you can also take the guns from the robot mode fold them up and they do mount on the bottom of the wings here so there it is with the guns mounted on the wings those look really good there's two tabs there and that's only the only spot that actually goes into so everything is solid and feels good on this there's nothing that feels like it's going to break or there's going to be any issues now let's do some vehicle mode comparisons so there it is with the make toys skywarp got their name from lightning something anyway uh, it looks really good with them now the problem here and it's it's not what you think the problem is it makes these guys look like kind of like chunk I mean they're, they're so finicky like all of these panels just fold up at, you know in order to just show this picture I had to kind of get this perfectly set up this one you know everything is solid nothing moves and when you play with this guy it really just things kind of move out of whack but they do size really well together I just want to show them standing up next to each other and you can kind of see that they're just about the same height uh, the, the make toys one is probably a little bit longer but they do really look good together and they fit you know the the, the size of the jets is is reasonable and they scale well together. And finally for comparison here is with the Blue Streak, my trusty old Blue Streak, and they look really good together. Good scale. He's probably not big enough and none of the jets are probably big enough. They, there should be a lot bigger, but it's fine for me. I like this scale. I don't have any issue with this size jet. And I don't think I'd want anything bigger because it probably wouldn't fit on my shelf. So there he is with Blue Streak. So final thoughts wise on this guy, I think this is a really solid release from Fans Toys. Everything just works, everything comes together. The robot mode is solid, the vehicle mode is solid, the paint is beautiful, the hardware is really good. I have a couple of minor issues, so these ratchet joints in the arms are a little finicky. I, I did tighten them as I was since I was transforming it anyway. Went in there and tightened them and they're a little bit better, but they do tend to loosen up because they're on a screw. I, I don't know why they chose to to use that kind of hardware there, but that's it. That's my only complaint with this entire figure. Everything about this, I, I love the way this works. I love the way it looks. It fits in well with the collection. It is true masterpiece style. I mean, everything about it is is what I would want in a masterpiece skydive. Now, you do have to be careful. I mean, it is an expensive figure, but I've transformed this now, I think four times, and I've not had any issue. The only issue I've had is these joints loosening up. Nothing's scratched, nothing's broken, nothing's chipped. Uh, there's a little bit of paint chipping, uh, just to be fully transparent. There's a little bit of paint chipping. Let's see, where are you? Right here. I think maybe getting close on that. So you can see a little bit of paint chipping right there. But that's it. That, that's, that's the only issue I have. And it's minor and I, I just wanted to point it out because I don't want to be... I, I just want to be honest. But at the same time, like, you wouldn't even notice that, honestly, you know? You wouldn't even look at that. So, it's just kind of a very, very small gripe. So, I highly recommend this if you're in for this set. If you're not in for this set, it's still a good bot on its own. The Maverick, I actually think this is a stronger release than the Maverick. Uh, just because the transformation and, and the way it sits together, you know, it's really, really solid. It doesn't feel like anything's going to, you know, pop out or break. So I actually like this better than the, than the Maverick figure in terms of just the, the quality. So that's really it for this guy. Um, I will be looking at the Make Toys version of Dirge Endgame next. And that will be 
coming up in the next week or so. I also want to take a look at this guy and compare him to the Zeta. I didn't want to make this review super long, so I made that a separate video. I'll do an in-depth comparison with that. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.